quiet now. I'll tell you another story to soothe your nerves. Now listen. Once upon a time, a little gnarled up dwarf lived in a dark cave that was full of man-eating bats. Now, quiet. This dwarf didn't have any face. I want an umbrella. This roof is leaking. Here, talk to her through this tube. And tell your father to slow down, too. Daddy! It's a tire. Let me have that tube. Hey, Bumstead! Bumstead! We're riding on a path. On the rim, Bumstead! It doesn't work! It's like all your father's inventions. They never work when you need them. There goes another tire. Bumstead! Bumstead! <laughs> Huh? I thought I heard Baby crying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now that we're on top of the hill, I, I didn't I didn't hear anything. It's too dark to see anything either. Well, uh, I'll holler through the tube there. Well, the tube's gone. Huh? Something jerked it out of my hand. The tube's gone? Mm-hmm. Gone where? Oh, uh, wait till I wipe off the back window. Yeah. There, now, I can... Hey, the trailer. What? The trailer's gone, too. <gasps> Dagwood! We must have lost it on the hill. Oh... Well, we'll return to the Bumsteads in a moment. But first, there's one saying that's known to cigarette smokers everywhere, and that's the phrase, I'd walk a mile for a camel. Yes, more smokers prefer camel cigarettes than any other brand. Camels are made from finer, more expensive tobaccos. They're slower burning, and they give you extra coolness and extra mildness. Being slower burning, camels are free from the irritating qualities of excess heat and too fast burning. Camels are mild, easy on the throat. Camels are cooler, too. For naturally, the slower a cigarette burns, the cooler the smoking. And because slow burning preserves the natural flavor and fragrance of fine tobaccos, camels give you extra flavor. Economy, too. Slower burning camels last longer and give you extra smoking per cigarette per pack. In recent impartial laboratory tests, camels burn 25% slower than the average of the 15 other of the largest selling brands tested. Slower than any of them. And that means a smoking plus, equal on the average to five extra smokes per pack. Now, if you live in a community where certain state cigarette taxes are in effect, you can save the cost of the tax through smoking camels. If there are no added taxes where you live, the savings are all yours. Yes, there's more pleasure per puff and more puffs per pack in camels. That's why smokers say, I'd walk a mile for a camel. And now we return to Dagwood and Blondie, who've traced their runaway trailer to the bottom of the hill and right into Camp Crawl In. Oh, thank heaven they didn't tip over, Dagwood. Yeah. These tire marks looked like they were riding on two rims and two tires, and uh, that kind of slowed them up. All right, Sherlock, just huh? find that trailer. I want to see if my baby's all right. Oh, golly, so do I. But I'm not so anxious to find Mr. Ditters. Golly, I wonder what he thought when they went coasting into this hobo camp. Oh, hurry, Dagwood. Pretty dark to go very fast. Oh, let's holler for them. Hello! Hey, listen. A tire blew out. Yes. That sounds like the Gypsy Queen, all right. Where did the sound come from? <laughs> oh, there goes the last tire. It's over there. Yeah, come on. Here it is, Blondie. Oh, 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 oh baby, are you all right in there? Yes, but we can't get that door open. Oh, I'll open it. Oh, oh. That door came off again, Daddy. Never mind. It'll let some of the water out. Out? Yes, out. It's up to my ankles in here. The roof leaks. Oh, baby Dumplin', I'm so glad to see you. Mommy will light a fire and get you warm. Yeah, uh, who's going to get me warm? I, I, uh, I, oh, oh, I knew it. Listen, I, I can fill oh. that voice tub I brought with water. You want a bob some apples, Daddy? No, no, baby Dumplin', but we'll eat the water and soak your feet. If I can find enough water to fill the tub. Oh, you want water, eh? Just ring me out. Uh, uh, ah, ah. Oh. oh, 
I'm afraid you're catching cold, Mr. Dithers. Oh. Wait, I'll light the oil stove. Come, baby. Mommy will drive. Hey, here's your tub. Oh, and you know what? Our tires didn't blow that time. Hey, they're still two good ones. Huh. Nothing like two good tires on a four-wheel trailer. Yeah. It's either noise we heard must have been a backfire. That means there's another car in this camp. Well, what are you standing there for? Go find them. Huh? Get some help. What? Get a jack. Get some boards. Get the tires changed. Huh? Get out! <laughs> oh. oh, yes, sir. And get me out of here by tomorrow noon. I've got to speak at the up, up, up to this club. I, I think your sneeze is a little better, Mr. Dithers. Well, I'm getting lots of practice. Where's the fire we're going to light? Where's the hot coffee we're going to have? Well, I'm afraid there's something wrong with the stove and the sink. When I put water in the coffee pot, it was kerosene. When I turned on the stove, it played water like a fountain. Elementary, my dear Mrs. Bumstead. Dagwood's got the feed lights crossed up. Oh. Light a match and I'll look. Well, I'm afraid all the matches are wet, too. Well, maybe I've got a dry match. Oh, yes. Just one. Now stand back while I light it. Oh, oh it lights. Now be careful, Mr. Dither. Don't talk. It makes a draft, and I... I ah! oh! Give me some match out, Mom. Oh, this is the end. I'm through. I'm going. Where's my hat? Where's Mr. Dither's silk hat, baby? Here it is. It's got some water in it. Ah? You said put something under the leak in the roof. Oh, baby. I'll go without a hat. Where's your car? Out by the road. What? But wait, if you drive home, what do we do? Who said I was driving home? I'm going to find a garage, get new tires. Oh. Get you all <laughs> oh, out of here. Hey, Mommy, that's need made the window change. I was leaning against the wall. Uh, how many tires do you need? Two? Just two. Two tires. Uh, three tires now. All right, I'll get three <laughs> tires. Oh, I'm a breeze. I know, I know. I'll get four new tires. <laughs> Somebody's standing outside our door. Shh, you'll maybe wake the baby. No one means us harm, Jenny. I'll see who's outside. Here's a lantern, Mole. Who's there? Uh, it's just me. I uh, saw your light. And... Bless my soul. It's a young fella. Wet to the skin. Jenny, make room by the oil stove. Huh? Uh, well, I, I don't want to crowd you, and my feet are pretty wet. Mm, why wouldn't they be a night like this? Come in. Have you egg? Huh? Uh, well, uh, no. Hungry, too. Jenny, dish up the mush. We we got company for some. Oh, no, thanks. I... There's only one help left, Ma. As long as there's any, we'll turn no hungry man away. Sit down, mister. Oh, I'm afraid I'm robbing you. Oh, no, no. We've all Ed. Barring Eddie, and he's out looking for work, bless him. Eddie's found something to eat somewhere, Ma. Else he'd be back by now. Is uh, Eddie your husband, Mrs. Uh... Friend? Oh. No, sir. Eddie's my boy and the man of the family. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Mr. Friend has passed on. Eddie's 15. Guy. A and he supports you? Mm, he does what he can. Mm -hmm. and so do we all. You're, you're not eating your mush, mister. Huh? Oh, it, it's very good. Are you sure you've eaten, Mrs. Friend? Oh, I'm on kind of a now diet, you might say. I don't need so much me not working. Do the three of you travel in that uh, automobile out there? Four of us. But the baby takes no room at all. Someday we'll stop traveling. It'll be good to stop traveling. We're been a year traveling. Golly. Oh, we'll get along. Now, come on, eat your mush. Huh? It's better than it looks. Oh, it, it, it's fine. Th that's not what's wrong. But, oh, you, you can't fool me. This was your supper, all you had, and you gave it to me when you didn't even know my name. Listen, I only think I'm hungry. Uh, right over there, somewhere, I have a trailer just full of stuff to eat, and a little wife that's the best cook in the state. Bless my soul. Yeah, and I was sorry for myself till I met you. Now, you know what we're going to do? We're all going over to my place for the best supper you've ever had. A 
little more steak, Mr. Friend? Mm, no, thank you kindly. Maybe Eddie, though. He works so hard and all. Eddie's gone to sleep, sitting up. Oh, you'll have to excuse him. It's so warm and cozy in here. Yeah, it's dried out pretty good. I'm glad I got that stove working. It's a lovely stove. Isn't it, Jenny? Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jenny. Oh, I, I don't know what you'll think of us all. But he's done you to eat, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> I think you're the nicest family I've met in a long while. You bet. Taking me in, a stranger and all? Oh, I don't expect there are any strangers, mister. There's one father to us all. You, uh, you must tell me how you made that mush you had, Mrs. Green. Dagwood says it smells delicious. Oh, yeah. oh now, I, I don't expect it would do for, well, rich people. Rich? You mean us? Well, now, I'm glad for you, but you must be well off to live in a lovely little house on wheels like this. But, Rita, you, you like this trailer? Oh, it's a real pleasure to sit in it. I wish my baby was old enough to know the nice bed he's sleeping in. Sheets, too. Clean sheets, like like we used to have at home. Uh, <clears throat> look, Mrs. Friend, we don't exactly live in this trailer. We just... Oh, Dad, what? Huh? Listen. Golly, here's Mr. Dithers. He's brought back the car. With tires for the trailer, I hope. Are you moving on tonight? Well, I'll just rouse up my young one. Oh, no, no. Uh, let them sleep a little longer. Oh, Where are you? I'm coming. I'll go with you, Dagwood. I, I want to talk to you. We'll all help you put on the tire. Oh, no. In the morning, there'll be time enough for that. Well, I'll just bid up the place for you whilst you're gone. Oh, my, this is handy, though. I think right by the stove. Hot water. Put the last tire down with the others. Don't let her hear us. She's humming a tune in there while she works. Oh, oh Dagwood, I'm so glad you agreed with me. Oh, she needs it worse than we do. We'll enjoy it more this way than if we kept it ourselves. Yeah. Honey, have you got the note to leave for her? Mm-hmm, right here. Well, read it to me again. Well, I'll, I'll have to get in the light from the doorway. Can she hear? No, she's still humming. All right. The note says, Dear Mrs. Friend, we're not coming back. We want you to have the home on wheels you like so much. Rest well in its clean beds. Warm yourself at its fire, as we were warmed by a glimpse of your own cheerful heart. Goodbye, and good luck always. Blondie, Dagwood. Mm. This is what she's humming in there. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Green. And good luck, always. Take me home now, Dagwood. Well, folks, in just a moment, we'll give you a brief synopsis of next week's Blondie story. But first... Extra, extra! Camels give you extra flavor. Extra! Camels give you extra mildness and extra coolness. Extra! Camels give you extra smoking per pack. Try Camels, the cigarette that gives you the extras. Camels bring you two other great shows each week. On Saturday, there's luncheon at the Waldorf with Ilka Chase. You'll find it the new high in daytime entertainment. On Saturday night, tune in and hear Bob Crosby and Mildred Bailey featuring music with a heartbeat. And next Monday night at the same time, tune in on Blondie. We think you'll get a chuckle out of Dagwood's experience on the witness stand. Well, that's a tip for your radio enjoyment. And for your smoking enjoyment every day, try Camels, the cigarette that gives you the extra. Beginning next Monday, due to daylight saving time, Blondie will be heard one hour earlier on many of these stations. Consult your newspaper for exact time. Blondie is written and directed by Ash Mead Scott. And this is Bill Goodwin speaking for the makers of Camel Cigarettes. Good night, all. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 